Well, good morning. Welcome to our coffee morning. Now, you've all heard it said that if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing properly. This, we will probably agree, is true. There are many jobs where anything less than the absolute perfection is not acceptable. Say, cardiac surgery or crossword setting spring to mind as examples of jobs where standards that fall below perfect can give rise to some vexation. You could probably think of many more. In the days when I used to maintain cranes for a living, this was always the case, as a job done badly could have a noticeable impact on others. It is reassuring to see the lengths that people go to in learning uh, skills that produce standards of workmanship and expertise that causes the rest of us to gasp in our admiration. Months or years of instruction, endless practice and peer approval of competence needed to achieve these standards. Which of us has not looked, stood back to admire a job that we have done ourselves, whether a particularly well-baked cake or tray of scones, a nicely painted window frame or garden fence. It may have been a job that you've been putting off for a while for lack of time or resources, but now it's done and how good we feel about it. The cakes are beautiful by any standard and the fence, well, it's still there and it looks, and it looks pretty good. Of course, you are not a professional baker or painter and your work may not be quite up to the more exacting standards of the professional. After all, you have only to please yourself while the pros do it for a living and expect to be paid and maybe win repeat business. Nevertheless, you can be pleased that you have done a good job as well as you possibly could. And anyway, your perfect particular skills are in a different field altogether, aren't they? Now, I expect many of us would admit to being something of a philistine when it comes to jobs that don't really matter to anyone else. After many years of tying their own flies or fishing, very few of us can lay any claim on making beautiful examples. Indeed, they often veer from the inventor's design in size, materials, or even colour if they need to. His cochabondi sometimes may sport three turns of peacock hern instead of the usual four. And their blue Zulus are nearly always too big, and all of them struggle for any consistency in the whip finish. Now I know this means very little to you, but fortunately it means very little to the trout either, because we still manage to catch a few. But it's a different matter when doing a job for someone else, and very few professional fly tyres have ever fished. And this is where that old saying breaks down. Would you not agree that a job worth doing is worth doing as well as you can, even if it falls well short of perfection? If perfection were the only standard worth achieving, then little would get done at all. In this world, the quest for the perfect gets in the way quite often of the gaining of the good. Who would wait in the rain for a limousine if they could have been home and dry in the house hours ago in a bus? Stuart Gerrish recently told us about Nehemiah's dismay at the state of the walls of Jerusalem, and he set about rebuilding them. Now, we didn't go out to tender for the most competitive price or the fancier specification. He persuaded the people to set about the job themselves to the best of their ability, and the results are still there to be seen today. Some bits were built by people with skills of completely different sorts, Yet the job was done in a couple of months. So strive for perfection, if you will. But beware of the search for perfection when it gets in the way of the good. Or the fence may never get painted. It could even be said that if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. <laughs> well, have a nice coffee morning. And don't forget to phone your friend.